this First Nations craft project, um, you are going to be needing a glue stick, a pair of scissors, pencil. Um, it would also be good to print off the template. This is the template for the, the mask itself. And these are the templates for the uh, features on the mask. Uh, you'll also be needing some construction paper. You'll need some black and white some red for the mouth and you'll need a large sheet of um, whatever color you like. I've chosen brown this time for the mask. So the first thing you're going to need to do for the mask is take the template um, and cut it out and you'll have something that looks like that. You'll notice that there's the word fold there and it's not that you're folding this template it's that you've got to fold the big long piece of um, construction paper so you're gonna fold it hot dog not hamburgers nice and skinny and then <clears throat> the templates gonna go along the fold line and this will create your mask so getting that on there is nice and easy and if you um, what's really helpful actually is to take the template and have it nearer to the edge of the bottom of the paper that leaves a lot of space at the top for uh, being able to do the nose um, or mouth part of things so and then you just need to take your pen pencil and just for purposes of being able to see it I'm going to do this in pen of course the kids usually do it in pencil and you trace around the template and then you're going to cut the template out so now what you have, once you've cut out the template, is a uh, shape that looks somewhat like this. And the nice thing about that shape is that um, we're going to be able to fold it and it will become a, a rounded uh, face shape. Fold it there and that's done later with staples. staples. So <clears throat> the next thing you're going to need to do is create all the facial features. So you're going to take the page of facial features and you're going to cut out each of them and you'll notice that the uh, each of them are labeled with the color that you could choose to put it on um, and that way it will help the students with um, figuring out where to uh, trace these on uh, the nose will be from the mask color the pupil of course is black and the shapes too are um, First Nations shapes you've got the outside eye ovoid and um, previous to uh, teaching this particular lesson, we spend a lot of time talking about the different First Nations shapes, the ovoids. This one is a U shape, a very common in First Nations um, uh, artwork. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those out now. So what we've got now are all the templates all cut out and um, they're arranged by the color that they need to be on. We've got a red mouth and we've got uh, a white eye ovoid. Uh, the shape of uh, First Nations art very often has this shape that's kind of oval. I always think it looks a little bit like a um, jelly bean. And uh, the ovoid shape is very common. And that's white. There's going to be the blacks, which are um, the outside eye ovoid, the under eye, the eyebrow, <clears throat> uh, the pupil. And then the nose is going to be on the brown of the of the mask color. Now, um, when you're cutting this, a good way to do it is folding the paper in half, uh, especially if there needs to be two of something. So you could technically trace two of these eyebrows, but that takes a while, so might as well fold the paper in half and cut cut once. So I'm gonna trace it and, and then cut these all out. So yeah, if you need two of something, like most of these, you're going to need to fold it in half and then actually for the for the nose you're going to need it to fold it in half as well because the the nose needs to have two sides so you take a, a piece of the brown paper fold it in half okay, trace it and cut it out so when you cut it out you will get a shape that is somewhat like that and that's going to make a really lovely nose and then with the mouth same thing you'll take the uh, red and you're going to place 
the dotted line against the fold of the paper and you'll end up with a mouth that is something like that. So I'll get busy and start cutting those out. <laughs> So now we have all the templates cut out and your two of most of everything um, and it's time for the layout. So <clears throat> I always tell the kids, flip it over so that you're not seeing the side that has the pencil or pen marks on it. So you got that nice pretty fresh side and you want to lay out the eyes. You don't want to be too close to the top of the head because you have to have space for the eyebrows as well. This part, this head is going to get stapled. So we want to lay it out a little bit uh, below the, um, below the top of the head. And the cool thing about this layout too is that you can have uh, a little bit of variety with, with how you're doing things in the way that you lay out your eyebrows and your under eyebrows. Your eyebrows can either be this way or they can be this way. This was the way I designed it in the beginning, but I've seen kids go both ways and they look pretty cool. Um, you're going to put in the inner white ovoid and then you'll put in the pupil. Now it's really starting to look like somebody. And then underneath the eyes, you've got some dramatic lines, some dramatic bags or under eye lines. And then you're going to take the nose and that might get laid out about like this. And you can just play around a little bit, make sure that you have enough space for everything. It looks like my mouth is just a little bit close there. So I'm going to push this up just a little bit. So I always tell my kids to lay things out before they glue, just because of that very thing. I've done this mask many, many times and I still didn't quite have enough room for the mouth. So that will be your general um, layout and then it's time to start gluing. So I'm going to do that. Really important, of course, to use a fair bit of glue and you want to get right to the edges of everything so we don't have peeling up pieces of our mask. Although, of course, at the same time, we don't want to have the uber glue where all you see is glue. Now everything gets uh, glued down entirely except for the nose. And the nose itself just gets about that much glue right near the top and a fair bit, but just on that top triangle piece. And the reason for that is that uh, when we curve the mask when we're stapling it, the nose will flare and that looks nice and dramatic. So there you are, keep gluing. So now that everything is all glued down, it's time for a little bit of stapling. To staple, you just gather the mask and you are going to take your staple and just clip it right about there. So he's got a rounded head and now he needs the same roundedness at the bottom. So same thing, grab your stapler. And when I'm doing this with a full class of 30, I always go and border, borrow a few staples, staplers, sorry, from another classroom. So what you've got here is your, sometimes the nose flips up a little, give a little pinch. You've got your First Nations mask. He's all ready to get some hair. So for the hair, I just take about two or three strands of raffia per student. They get to make their own hairstyle and they always love that. Um, so they can decide, do they want some uh, short hair, some long hair, some in-between hair. So I think I'm going to cut this guy so he's got some volume. I'm going to take that extra hair and add, add it to the front. Right, so he's got some pretty lovely looking view going on. And I like the way the raffia looks because it has a nice uh, natural look to it. And then I just once again using the stapler, and this can be a little tricky, so just take your time. Uh, I staple across the, um, uh, across the hair. And then generally speaking, I get it all in one go. I'm always happy when that happens. If I don't, I'd try again. And the last thing we're going to do is we just need a little tag. Doesn't he look cute? Uh, we just need a little tag to be able to hang this to the wall. 
So, so what the what you're gonna need now is a little tag to attach the mask to the wall. So you just take and cut a piece of uh, construction paper, the same color as the mask, and you fold it in half. And you're just going to staple that as well to the top. And that will create a little tag for you. And that tag, you can put a, a pin right there and just pin that little fellow to the wall. So I hope you have uh, now feeling kind of confident in making these First Nations masks. The kids really enjoy doing it and they are very striking uh, up on the wall. And I will often have the students do a variety of different colors. So. Uh, there they have a lot of uh, interest while you're looking at them and then uh, what they've mastered the basic techniques here a second lesson is always really interesting to get them to look at First Nations masks um, and uh, historical ones and and be inspired by them and create their own facial features now that they know how to do it in a very basic way so I hope you've enjoyed it thank you very much